Hello students. Today I am going to deal with standard 7th to standard 12th of the famous dramatic monologue Rabbi Ben Ezra written by Robert Browning. As in my previous video uh, we have discussed the first six stanzas of this poem where the speaker, the rabbi, is giving expression to Browning's optimist philosophy regarding youth and age and his faith in God. Now, let's see what the rabbi further says in this poem in stanza 7. For dance, a paradox which comforts while it moves, shall life succeed in that it seems to fail. What I aspired to be and was not comforts me. A brute I might have been, but would not sink in the scale. The rabbi thinks that man should not care for failures, should not care for disappointments. And, and this thing seems a paradox. So here, uh, from all this, this rabbi just derives a paradoxical conclusion that what appears as failure to a man is in reality a measure of success. This paradox may seem to mock at the efforts of man, but in fact it should soothe him. Man should judge his success not from the result or actual achievement, but by the labor by the hard work which has been put in to achieve that goal. It is only when man's aims are very high that he is faced with failure. Shall life succeed in that it seems to fail? He says that in our failures, our true success lies in our failures. Because we have failed just because of the grandeur, just because of the heights of our hopes and dreams. So, a man should not care for disappointments and failures. The rabbi goes on to say that what I aspired to be and was not comforts me. That uh, he derives comfort. He, he just... Uh, has the comfort from having had noble aspirations even though he had failed to achieve them for it differentiated him from lower animals that is the only satisfaction that is because of his aspirations he is the supreme creation of God and this very feeling com comforts him he says that a brood I might have been a life without high aspirations and hard struggle would have reduced him to the level of a brute a low and lowered his status on the scale of creation. Would not sink in the scale means to lower his status in the scale of creation, scale of divine creation. So without his aspirations, without his noble aspirations, he might have been a brute, a lower animal. So... These, in this way, these lines express Browning's glorification of failure, we can say. It is inevitable that aspiring so high, man fails to achieve his goal. And in this failure lies his glory. In the stranger 8, Brown, the same note continues. What is he but a brute? whose flesh has soul to suit, whose spirit works least, arms and legs won't play. To man, propose this test, thy body at its best. How far can that project thy soul on its lone way? And the rabbi says that a man whose soul works only to support his physical needs. As he says in the second line, whose flesh has soul to suit means whose soul works only to support his physical needs is no better than a brute. 
it is only in a brute that soul and body are identical man should struggle for man should strive for spiritual development and not be satisfied with mere physical needs that according to rabbi the task of a man the task of a human being is the extent to which his body functioning to the best of its ability helps the soul in its development he is to say that the body should push forward the soul on its lonely journey the body at its best when the body is at its best in the last line he says that how far can that project thy soul on its lone way the body should push forward the soul on its lonely journey towards spiritual development towards spiritual perfection where it shall not be accompanied by flesh only by body only so in this way browning does not negate the importance of physical parts of the body of man he just talks about flesh or the flesh of man as a great aid as a great help in his spiritual progress in the stanza 9th the rabbi says yet gifts should prove their use i own the past profuse of par each side perfection every turn eyes ears took in their dole brain treasured up the whole should not the heart beat once how good to live and learn Um, the according to the rabbi the physical parts of man are also gifts of god yet gifts should prove their use and these very physical uh, um, parts they are the divine gift so they have their own value and they should be put to good use um, rabbi in the rabbi admits that his own experiences in the past i own the past profuse means his own experiences in the past are um, just in plenty profuse is for plentiful he says uh, that his own experience in the past when bodily power when the physical parts are fully developed had great value for him in his youth he was fully aware of his physical faculties and their uh, potentialities he developed these parts and perfected the parts of his sense faculties eyes ears all the senses the eye and ear did their share in accumulating the experience the intellect brain the, in the second last line brain treasured up the whole the intellect stored these experiences of the physical organs should not the heart beat once how good to live and learn and he would be feeling short in his duty if his heart did not throb with gratitude for having had the opportunity to use his body to use his physical parts in his youth for acquiring experience the point is that youth and physical parts are not insignificant this is the point that is made by the rabbi in this stanza students he is to say that youth and physical parts are not insignificant instructive value is to be gained from developing the physical faculties and this is done in the period of youth and this is the beauty of the youth we can say or this is the uh, importance of the youth that the youth prepares the ground for the mature or a store of experiences in the old days the rabbi further says not once beat praise be thine i see the whole design so rabbi declares that a human heart should cry out in joy that praise be thine means we should be thankful to god all glory to god praise be thine means all glory to god we should not the we should always be thankful in our hearts for god 
Um, and our heart should cry out in joy that God is glorious for us because God has given us many gifts. In a human being in his old days, he realizes that God has a noble and complete design for the creation, for the universe. Thus, youth and old days are not separate parts with no connection, but com they complement each other to form a complete whole. Means youth and age are complementary to each other. They are complementing each other in this complete design, perfect plan of the God for human life. In the knowledge and experience of youth, he saw the power of God at every step and its perfection in the universe around him. So now in his old age, he has become conscious of the other attributes of God and they are, that is, perfect love. So that's why the rabbi calls God's plan for man flawless, perfect. As in the fourth line he says, perfect I call thy plan. So he calls God's plan as flawless, without any defect, complete, perfect. Thanks that I was man. He is grateful to have been created a human being. He has full confidence, he has full faith in the maker, in the creator, God. And prays that he would shape, remake, remake, he should shape it and mold him to perfection, to completion. He knows that whatever God will do, I trust that thou shall do, means he knows that whatever God will do will be for man's good. So, he says that I have complete faith. I, have, I just trust in God's designs. So students, in this way, these lines express Browning's belief that the divine power is benevolent, the divine power is all-powerful, all-loving, and we should be thankful what he has given us, what he has blessed us with. Stand 11. For pleasant is this flesh, our soul in its rose mash, pulled our to the earth, still yeans for rest. Would we some prize might hold to match those manifold possessions of the brute, gain most as we did best. Here, the rabbi says that the body has its own pleasures. For pleasant is this flesh. Flesh is for body. That this body has its own pleasures and attractions. The soul of man, our soul, the soul of the man, the soul, human soul, in its rose mash means is trapped. Is trapped by the delightful body, which is compared to a rose mash. Rose mash is a pleasant place of imprisonment. So here Browning is comparing to the uh, comparing the body to a net made of roses. So here he is talking about the attractive ensnarements or the attractive imprisonments of the bodily pleasures for the soul. The body tends to drag the soul of man towards earthly pleasures. Pulled ever to the earth means the soul of the man is entrapped by the delightful body and that body ever tends to drag, drag the soul of man towards earthly pleasures. The soul tries to rise above these earthly things. It longs for peace and calm. But it yields for rest. It longs for peace and calm, which cannot be attained in earthly pleasures. For they invariably cause mental unrest and conflict. So, the soul always yields for, the soul always wishes for higher pleasures, spiritual pleasures. The rabbi wished would we some prize might hold? Wish that soul could get a reward. A counterbalancing the physical pleasures sought and satisfied by the body. The physical pleasures are the possessions of the animals and they can be achieved without pain or conflict. Man's soul strives to achieve something higher than gross animalistic enjoyments. 
and its reward must be proportional to its spiritual struggles so here uh, the rabbi just wishing that he should soul his soul should get a reward so in this way uh, the rabbi is just giving expression to his trust to his faith in divine benevolence he further sings let's not always say spite of this flesh today i strove made had gained ground upon the whole as the bird wings and sings let's cry all good things are ours no soul helps flesh more now than flesh helps soul in these lines the rabbi presents the body and soul on an equal level students i repeat here the rabbi presents the body and soul both on an equal level he says that we should not decry the body and say that it is the obstruction in the path of spiritual development and that we have fought hard against body to make our progress in our journey of life so to speak of body and soul in terms of mutual hostility is very wrong we should feel as happy as a bird which flies high and sings merrily we should joyously declare that we are grateful for all the things which we possess all of them are good all of them because they are all divine gifts therefore the body and soul both are equally good all good things are ours body and soul both these things are given to us by god so both are good soul helps flesh more now then flesh helps soul both of both these things the body and the soul they complement each other and each helps the other in man's progress so brownings in this this these stanzas brownings ideal call for an alliance between body and soul for a union between body and soul with each working for the other's good though uh, not advocating sensual or physical pleasures browning is not uh, does not favor ascetic denial of flesh either he is just having faith in the god's design he does have faith in the complementary role of both soul and body in the development of human life in our next videos we'll talk about the remaining standards thank you